Hi there, playing with junk. Uh, my neighbor is moving and before he throws everything away, he asked me if I want to have a look uh, on his electronic uh, collection. So, and uh, I picked some stuff here and I took it with me and Let's have a look what I got. There are some interesting parts here in this big box. Let's start with the rectifiers and diodes. There is a whole collection. Uh, date code is a little bit difficult, but I think many of them are from the 1970s, maybe even older. Some of them have never been used, like this one. There's no solder on the contacts, just a lot of dust. Uh, this one has probably been used. Well, let's start with the colored ones. Uh, these are selenium rectifiers. So they are constructed quite simple there is a rod through all uh, these uh, discs here there is insulation around the rod and there is always one small disc of the semiconductor selenium uh, oxide i think i'm not sure a rectifier a, a diode a cooling plate, a washer, a diode, a cooling plate, a washer, and so on. Um, it has five connectors. Yellow is AC, red is positive, blue negative, and because we are we have two blues, they are connected together because we only need one. So how does this look like? in a schematic it's relatively simple we have positive in the center then we have one two three diodes in series uh, positive in the center one two three diodes oops then we have one AC then we have the same to the other side, mirror-like. Uh, I should draw a triangle, the other AC. And then we go to the negative side, like this one. I only draw one diode now. It's also three, of course, minus and like that one minus with a connection between that's our rectifier and we can say from the number of uh, diodes that are used one two three in series that's about 75 volts because it's around uh, 20 5 to 30 volts uh, per diode so if you need a high voltage you just add some diodes in series for example this one has only two diodes per uh, segment and it's a b50 uh, slash 40 there's three, so I think it's 50 volt, three amps. That's a B75, so 75 volt or 60 volt, maybe AC, 75 volt DC, 2.2 amps. And you also can see it has smaller cooling fins, that means less amps. That one has a little bit more, so that's probably three amps. Then here we have the same size. Uh, well, that's a little bit weird. EB11-20. 
20 volt 1 amp probably it's only one disc yes 20 volt that that is realistic 1 amp so not very much but well possible then we have this one that's a BYX32 1000 that means it's a 1000 volt and 150 amp diode uh, I'm not sure yeah there is a symbol so that part the whole K series minus and the rope here the metal rope that's the positive oh we could check if it's still working well it looks new and unused and I'm pretty sure this is still working but why not I'm testing devices like that uh, semiconductors and all the other stuff with this tester here some call it the octopus tester it has two test leads and it goes to the to my oscilloscope here which is in XY mode and it works like this oops under normal conditions we have a horizontal line and if I touch the two and make a short circuit I get a vertical line so what the octopus or I have an electronic version of that tester does is we have a voltage which is measured by the x uh, axis here um, when the circuit is open and the voltage drops and the current rises when I make a short circuit so we have the current on the vertical axis here and if I connect a diode like that oh, I said minus is here oops positive is here we get a diode uh, signature here on the oscilloscope you see in reverse direction which is here it doesn't conduct there is no current and then in forward direction because we are testing with AC we get a high current but no voltage so probably 0.6 volt maybe for this big diode a little bit more let's see what the selenium rectifier does so I take the minus that's the one with the, the connection here I go here so that one looks pretty good seems I holding it upside down so here we have the same diode line and it's pretty well conducting I have another example the red one here let's see I take the AC port the positive port let's turn that over and you see the vertical line is not perfectly vertical it's a little bit to the right side that means we have a resistance so the more resistance we have the shallower this curve curve will be and if it is uh, that short we have a vertical perfect vertical li line so that means these selenium rectifiers have a certain resistance and that's the reason why they need these cooling fins because they get hot and when they get hot they have a very special property they start to smell they have a very distinctive smell selenium rectifiers if you smell it and you know what it is you will never forget it um, and that's where the German word comes from uh, 
gleich riecht er. Rectifier in German Gleichrichter, but if you pronounce it a little bit different, it's a gleich riecht er. That means it will start to smell quite soon. Well, that's another selenium rectifier and you can see it's uh, built in a different fashion. It's clamped together here, but you also have these plates and uh, the selenium uh, disc somewhere between. It's a B30, that means 30 volt and 3000 milliampers, so 3 amps at 30 volts. Probably only one disc per uh, division. Then we have a 250 volt C75 and this one is very light so I assume this is not a selenium rectifier this is probably something else I can't say what it is 250 volts 75 milliampers that's probably a rectifier for a, a tube radio it rectifies more or less directly from, from the mains, but only for very low uh, current. So in total that would be, well, a couple of watts, maybe enough for some radio stages. 250 volts, 75 milliamps. It's the same value, but in a different shape. And that's also a rectifier. It is marked here. Uh, AC plus AC minus. And there is another minus here. Yeah, it's the same kind. It's also 250 volt, but 100 milliamps. So the smallest is the most powerful. Funny. And we have much more crap. There is a resistor. Yep. Let's see how it looks like. A big resistor in its original box. Comes with a label. Remove this strip only at final assembly. It protects the wire against accidental damage. Blah blah blah. blah. Do not over scat. Tighten the screw. Yeah, what's underneath? It's a wire wound resistor with one side that is not covered with insulation material and there is a movable uh, contact. You can lose, uh, lose the screw, move the contact to the desired value. It's, it's like a potentiometer but one that is only adjusted one time and then installed and yeah. Oh my, Vitrous Enamelled Resistor. Be right with Oh my. That's nice, original. They make all kind of other things. They also make diodes. It has 500 ohms, 25 watts, stock number. Oh my, manufacturing company Skokie, Illinois, made in USA. So if someone from Skokie, Illinois watches this, please tell me if that company still exists. Maybe you are working there. Let me know. Write it in the comments. Okay, what else do we have? More resistors, 50 ohms, 10% from the Carborundum Corporation. And these are interesting because they don't have any leads, they don't have soldering spots, they just seem to have a metal coated uh, ceramic and they go into a holder like that. So we have 50 ohm and another 50 ohms. Someone wanted 20 Swiss francs for that. I think that time is 
over uh, since a long time. They really look like new, so they probably have never been used. So, 2 times 50 ohm. And if you're happy, you could put a copper tube through that and have a water cold resistor. Uh, these things are nice too. Probably you have seen that before, probably not. It's a variable uh, capacitor. So you see every second plate here is attached to the shaft and the other half of the plates is attached to, well, the, this uh, solder, these contact points here. Ah, oh, yes, here they are. That's the contacts. We have two different uh, capacitors. There is no marking about the capacity, I think. Probably here. I cannot read it. Let me get the magnifier. No, it's just the company logo. Okay. Don't know. Some some 10 picofarads or so and how it works well you know capacity depends on uh, how much surface you have on the two uh, electrodes and how close they are together so we cannot change the distance but we can change the active area so now all the uh, plates here are outside, so the active area where they are uh, between each other is very small. And then we can go to the maximum, which is reached right in this moment here. Um, you can also see that the outer plates have some cuts here, so you can move individual segments in or out making the capacity larger or uh, lower and this can be used to make the entire assembly more linear so for example if it is not linear if at the end it misses a little bit of capacity you can move the part right here at the end or in the beginning you can move it and sometimes you see in an old radio that these uh, segments here have been twisted a little bit so don't uh, make them straight because they must be twisted like that because someone has adjusted that carefully so that's a bigger version maybe for a high voltage radio amplifier stage you see exactly how it works it has two large uh, contacts here with quite a bit of wire that was soldered to it. So that's all the same. And that's the other contact. And here we have 120 picofarad. So that's the maximum uh, capacity here. Everything is mounted on uh, ceramic insulators. So that's probably from an old radio uh, power uh, uh, sta uh, stage right before it goes to the antenna. Then we have another big resistor. This one has 50 ohms and it has this division. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and the 5 ohms in between, so it's the same principle. You, can, you lose that screw and you move that to the position you need and you have your adjustable resistor. Then we have something special. That's a potentiometer with a data sheet. or whatever that is. 
Okay, this side is English, so we take that one. Novotechnik. It's a German company. This dates from the time when Germany had four uh, places zip codes. They now have five since they fused together with Eastern Germany. That was in 1989 and I think the, the conversion to five uh, places zip codes was in 19. 93, so this is certainly before that time. We also have a telex number. Telex was a, well, it was a little bit like fax, but without pictures. So you sent uh, written data in binary or some kind of code and an automatic typewriter has written it then to paper and you could read your message. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yes, we have three terminals. One, two, three, properly labeled with different colors. So the red one is the center tab. And it has one, oh, half, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, the 10 uh, turn potentiometer, and you can hear it probably. That's a wire wound uh, potentiometer. And it's as the description here tells me it is made for machines to measure uh, the distance from travel of any movable parts. It has a linearity of 0.1%. That's very, very super linear. It has 5 kilo ohms and the total resistance is plus minus 5%, which is, well, not too bad, not super good. But I think the linearity is what makes the deal here. Power maximum 5 watts. Well, nobody wants really to put power on a potentiometer and I saw one of these on eBay uh, it was unused all stock for 150 euros and I just wonder what the price was when these things were new and I have two of them so I could put them on my uh, lathe for X and Y uh, measuring uh, an electronic and yeah. Okay, what else? What's this? I don't know. A surprise. A potentiometer. No, it's another uh, capacitor. And this one doesn't have air in between for insulation. It has some uh, discs of uh, some kind of plastic insulation material. So that's the reason why it can be built so small. Do we have any kind of data? 200 picofarad probably. Maybe something around that. I could measure that but I don't want to right now. Then we have something in a bag from the Red Cross. Yes, that guy has been working for the Red Cross for a couple of years. So, I know what it is. Do you know it too? You can see it has two connectors. One goes to the outer case and one seems to go inside. They are shorter or longer. The principle, they are, well, it feels like ceramic. Okay, I will tell you, they are capacitors. 100 picofarad and 2 kilovolts. 
and 12 by 20 that's the size 12 millimeter 20 millimeters this one is where is it can't see it here 12 by 8 yeah could be so high voltage uh, capacitors probably also from radio equipment maybe goes together with that two kilovolts probably yes why not and we have Drehspul Einbauinstrument what could that be if you're speaking German you know what it is if not you see it right now yeah instrument is clear it has a rotating coil that means Drehspul and it goes from 0 to 50 milliamps and they have never been used before it has a, a short uh, there's uh, some spring here inside that shorts the terminal so you can't accidentally uh, blow your new instrument so it's probably best practice to connect everything and then at the end remove that spring here 50 microamps uh, did I say milliamps? no it's microamps so it's extremely low and it has a bit of st static charge yeah must be that if you rub this uh, faces here sometimes they build up a static charge that is strong enough to move the pointer out of the zero uh, position so I'll put that back but then I have a really interesting chip that's this one I must say I'm a little bit afraid of this because it's a huge bug and I'm not sure if it bites me or not <laughs> ouch um, it is marked TU60 here is marked 2 it has 17 pins well it has 9 on this side and only 8 on that side but not because one is broken because but well it's clearly marked like that I have no idea what it is there is nothing in the internet because that's from a time where internet wasn't there uh, if someone knows what it is please write it in the comments I have something similar here that's another chip with the with its own protection, storage protection case uh, it's marked OS2 60 maybe date code 1960 I don't know it has 10 pins nothing here it has OS2 on both directions so you can read it either way it has a marking 1 and 10 for the pin and that's it it's uh, all filled up with this very hard resin here so if someone knows what that could be I assume it has something to do with either uh, a machine control unit from a industrial mechanical machine or it could be something telecommunication like I have no idea if you have an idea let me know nice turning potentiometer from, from Culver Limited in England wire wound okay Romeo what Romeo oh, Romford Romford 
that in England sounds so Romford. Someone there from Romford, England? Please tell me if that uh, company still exists. Just for my curiosity. Oh, and then there are these guys. They are cute. Where is the second one? I have a second one here. Yes. That's also some kind of potentiometer, but that is one that can be adjusted if I find my screwdriver. Just like that. You see that is the slider. There is wire wound around this ceramic tube. And here you can adjust the value of resistance. So this one is a little bit bent here. I think I will have to fix that, but that one looks okay. That's a nice little product. Do we have a manufacturer? No, can't see anything. Okay, let's go to something a little bit more modern. I have two disk drives from HP. I know I mostly work with HP stuff, so my parts are most likely or in most cases HP, but I'm sure IBM or Dell will have the same disk drives. And by the way, they are not disk drives, they are SSDs, but if you look at them, they are extremely fat. So that's the probably thickest SSD I have ever seen. And this one here is also extremely heavy. So I'm asking myself if they put some lead chunks inside just to make it heavy, to make it appear like a real beefy uh, SSD. It's 400 gigabytes not extremely much and that one is even less it's only 120 gigabytes but we have also to see that this is from 2009 it's already 10 years old now uh, nine years okay and this one is from 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 I don't see a date code. Well, it's probably from about the same time and I'm pretty sure they have been really, really expensive. So let's have a look inside. But what is in the rest of the case? This is a little bit sticky. Oh, there is something. I can see something white, which is a little bit unusual in an SSD drive. Let me lift that up. It looks like batteries, batteries in an SSD. Okay. Create and dispose of properly. Okay, I will do that later. We have Maxwell 10 farad and two and a half volts. So that tells me we have another set of supercapacitors. So I hope you can see that here on each pair of chips so the lower chip is directly on the board and the upper chip is with this cut out pins put in parallel to the lower chip here on the other side there are all uh, connections are there no cut away pins so why do they need Super caps to retain the data? No, they certainly have flash chips here, but 
what they have is uh, I didn't look for the type but I'm pretty sure this is a RAM chip so this SSD drive has its own cache on board here and it's the same story as for rail controllers if the data is in the cache RAM here and not yet written to the to the flash memories and you cut the power you will lose data so they use these capacitors to write the RAM the contents of the RAM to the flash chip when power is uh, switched off so they can save all the volatile data here in the RAM to the flash chips and then power off completely and that's the reason why this SSD is so big. Maybe there's an LED behind. Oh, multi-board construction. That's a wild thing. Okay, there's some thermal pad here. Yeah, that's some thermal conductive silicone recycling stuff. Okay, let's open that like a door. And we have another one. Oh, a lot of chips. Nothing but space for more chips. So this is a what did I say? 400 gigabyte. If it is fully populated here, it's I think 800 would be logic. Then we have not much here. It's quite a bit sticky that stuff. Okay, there is. Oh, they glued it with this label. What's underneath? So there is only this thin label between the outside and the chip and now it comes off. Pliant. Not proliant, but pliant. P T H E M I P T Hemi 2 dash 1 V0 uh 1406 uh no here yes april 06 so it's from 2006 that means it's a little bit older than the other one therefore that's probably the reason why it is so much bigger yeah that's quite a disc and it is still working so at least it was working before i took it apart so i will, could probably well the problem is it's an sas drive not a sata drive so it's a little bit hard for me to get that connected to my computer but probably i could find a converter and then when I leave it open like that I could have an SSD that looks like this one okay so it's like a tiny little book a book SSD a three-dimensional SSD okay would look nice on top of my computer working why not okay what else do we have uh well i have a short story for you you probably know this new product from the coca-cola company it's called fuse tea and uh, it is sold uh, worldwide under this name but in switzerland we have a different version and 
only we have a different version. It looks like this. No, it's not the color of the label, it's the word fuse. It is written with an S instead of a Z. So, why is this? Maybe because we in Switzerland like our tea like this? No, the reason is a little bit weirder. The word, word fuse, if you say it in Swiss German, would be like Futze. And that's a very nasty word for the female sexual organs. Maybe you know names like this in your own language and it is not really appropriate to write it on a bottle of tea. So that's why Coca-Cola Switzerland has changed the name to Fuse Tea. It sounds exactly the same. It's written differently, so there is no confusion and no laughter at all. Okay, thanks for watching.